Okay, so you just finished the SharePoint features permissions article, and we've gone over the various levels of permissions available. Um, it's a lot of reading, but it, it's really important. SharePoint lets you granularize permissions. And so what I'm going to do is show you a couple of things. I'm going to show you site permissions and web part permissions. And if you don't know, if you're not familiar with the terms, don't worry because we'll, we'll get there. So if I want to edit the permissions for a site that I'm on, I'm going to click the gear icon up in the top right and click on site settings. And this gives me a whole bunch of settings as you can see, but I'm just focused on site permissions. So there might be some groups already in there, but let's just focus on what you can give a certain user. So if I want to grant permissions to a user, I'm going to click grant permissions and I'll type that person's name. We'll use my friend Charles Nasio for an example. And I can put in a message, hi, welcome to the site. And then I've got an options button. I could just send this off and what it'll do, the options you can see is I have the option to send an email invitation and select a group or permission level. So if I already have groups combined, the names of the groups will be in there with the level of uh, permission that they have. But let's focus right now on these. So view only lets them only view it. They can't download documents. They can only view the site. They can still browse through it and, and view pages and that type of thing as long as those pages inherit from the team site. But you, you really don't get much here. Read is just a step above. What it does is let you download copies of documents and, and sync document libraries to your computer. We'll get into that later, but it, it gives you a little bit more than view only, but you can't add anything. If you want a user to be able to add or contribute to the site and the information on it, you would give them contribute access. That lets them create, edit, um, delete, uh, list items and documents, and it also lets them have have uh, more control over things. Edit is just a step above contribute and that lets them edit things. Now that that doesn't sound very specific but what it does is it lets them edit the site, it lets them edit web parts, it lets them edit views and and gives them more control but not as much as design. Design lets them change the look of the site, change the colors, change the way the pages are laid out, it lets them do a lot more things. And then full control gives them almost deity permissions on the site where they can delete libraries and, and add apps and that type of thing. So those are your levels of control, or I'm sorry, of permission. So uh, he's already got permission, so I'll just cancel that. The other thing we want to talk about is groups. Groups are pretty cool because they're specific to the whole site. So if I created another subsite below the team site, um, I could set that site to inherit permissions. And it would just take everything that was on the top level site, the team site, and it would just use these permissions as its own. So if I gave Charles owner permission on the top level site and I had a subsite that inherited permission, he would also be an owner on that site below it. If I don't want to inherit permissions and I want to create a group that lets you kind of group a bunch of people instead of specifically uh, you know changing everyone's permissions individually you can put them into a group and then edit the groups permissions so I'll show you how to make a group right now we'll just call this view only so you put in a name and you can put an about so if, if it's you know an accounting group or a racquetball club or something like that you can put that in there um, the group owner is the person that has full control and can change anything about the group, such as adding and removing members or deleting the group. Only one user or group can be the owner. So you can have groups that own groups. So before we get too far into the whole, uh, you know, groups and a groups and a groups inception type thing, we'll just put one person as the group owner. Um, you can also set who can see the members of the group. And if you don't want any, if you only want group members to see who's in the group, that's fine or you can set it to everyone. The only reason you do this is if you have maybe, you know, a secret society. There's other reasons, but just think of it that way. If you have a secret society, you don't want anybody to get their feelings hurt if they're not in the group or something of that nature, you can just set it to group members, but we could set this to everyone. Who can edit the membership of the group? We can set it to either the group owner or group members. If you have a big group, it might be better to let members choose the access to it. Maybe, you know, if, if you've got a, a charity committee, you can let them invite and add people and change permission levels. 
Membership requests allows users to actually request membership to join or request, request that their membership be revoked or leave the group. I don't see a lot of this in my day-to-day -day usage of SharePoint, but it's an option. And then you can also set it to automatically accept those requests. So whether it's to join or leave, you can set it to automatically accept them. Uh, send membership requests to the following email. So if Charles wanted to have access to the view only group, he would request access. If I enabled this and enabled auto accept, or I disabled auto accept, it would send me a notification. If you have auto accept on, it'll send you an email anyway and tell you they joined the group. And then we have our permission levels. So anybody in the group can either have full control, design, contribute. The, the other thing is these permission levels inherit the permission below them. So if I do read and view only, I mean, obviously there's not much to it. They can view obviously with read. Um, if I do contribute and read, it's not really necessary to do that because contribute has read access. So there's certain situations that are beyond the scope of this video that explain why that's there. So we'll just do view only for this group because it's view only and I'll create it. So view only is now a group. If I go back to my site permissions, then I'll see that the view only group gives them view only access to the site. So let's talk about inheritance for a moment. I have a document library here on my team site. And if I want to edit the permissions of that document library, anytime you see an app or an app part on a screen, you can click on the name of it to be taken to the full app itself. And then you see up here, we have the context menu. Well, we're going to, we're going to deal with the permissions of the library. So we'll click library and then way over here, we'll see library settings and shared with, and these are, kind of very important later on in more lessons we'll get further into it but shared with I can go in and I can invite a group like view only to have access to the site now this is where it gets tricky you can set a permission level for that group <laughs> so you have to be very careful and be a little more organized with this but we'll make sure it's view only so anybody in the view only group will have access to the view only access to the document library so that's really all there is to it with the permissions. Um, there's a lot of other tutorials out there that can help you. Um, I, 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 I'm not sure if I'm being very thorough and I might update the video and update my article later on, but for the time being, uh, that's, that's what I've got. So hope you enjoyed it and check out the next lesson.